It seems like we've been talking about flat earth maps quite a lot recently. First there was GeoTruth NZ, who failed miserably to construct a map with his sunrise and sunset times. Then we had Antonio last week, who, well, look at this. His scale, the distance is less than half of our ruler, which... Less than half of the ruler? Well look, here's London, here's half of the ruler, where do you think Athens is? On the other yellow dot, Antonio. Thought that was obvious. Classic. Anyway, this week someone has come forward with not only their own flat earth map, but their very own working flat earth model as well. Hello all, and welcome along to the most loved show on YouTube, kind of, Flat Earth Friday. My name is Simon Dan, thank you very much for joining me. Yes, Phuket Word has come forward with what he believes is a fully working Flat Earth model. Now, let's all bear in mind here though, that this is also the person that said this. So of course, when, when the sun goes away, you don't have uh, the sun lighting up this oxygen-rich air, liquid, gas, and uh, it goes dark. And this. I've asked Simon Dan to show me where on earth water does not flow down a curve. And this. Oh dear. Oh, and oh, there's the sunrise because the earth is coming back round again. Yeah? <laughs> So let's take this video with a massive chunk of sodium chloride, shall we? Okay, Phuket Word, let's hear it. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. We'll often hear the argument that the heliocentric model perfectly predicts all the observations that we can make, especially when it comes to observing the sun and the moon. That's not an argument, that's a fact, because it can predict that. However, this is a blatantly false statement. Is it? We can predict exactly where the sun and moon will be for the next 1,000 years and beyond, including all solar and lunar eclipses. It happens at exactly the time that we say it will. Not really sure how you can argue against that. Any model can be created from the predictive nature of sunrise and sunset or watching the moon go overhead and watching its phases throughout a month. Yet no flat earth model exists that can do that. Hmm. It is the predictability of these earthbound observations that are then interpreted into a model. And the heliocentric model is just one of many possible models, but it of course is based on the assumption that the sun is at the centre and the earth is another planet orbiting the sun. Well, it's not an assumption, it's a fact. One would be forgiven for thinking that Phuket Word was a geocentrist if he wasn't already a flat earther. And in turn, we have the moon orbiting the earth, taking about 28 days to do so. But really these are just calculations and uh, illustrations based on earthbound observations. Again, it is the predictability of seeing or knowing a sun rise or a sunset at a certain time that is then used and interpreted to create an imaginary model to have us perceive the Earth as being somewhere in space. That is all well and good, but has there ever been a solar eclipse in all of recorded history that has taken place in exactly the same time and exactly the same place for exactly the same length of time? The simple answer is no. There is a cycle, and it's called the Saros cycle, and it lasts just over 18 years. This essentially means that, geometrically, the Sun, Moon and Earth will all be in exactly the same position. Crucially though, 
the shadow that each eclipse throws on the Earth during separate Saros cycles are not the same. And of course, this is a very difficult image to break away from or to perceive things as being any different to what we've been taught since we were children, hanging uh, solar systems in the classroom and uh, being shown the same kind of illustrations over and over again and having it passed off as irrefutable scientific fact that we're on a spinning globe orbiting the sun with a moon orbiting the earth. Because we are, and it does. So what I'd like to do here is just show a very crude and simple presentation that isn't meant to do anything other than uh, illustrate how we can interpret the observations of the sun and the moon. Good, because I was going to say, what on earth is going on with the countries here? Look, Africa, Asia, both too small. And where are the blue blazers is New Zealand going? In a different way other than what we have been taught to believe or has been passed off as scientific fact. So what we have here is a flat earth map and again this isn't to say that the earth looks like this uh, or that it has these dimensions it is simply to illustrate that we are looking down on a stationary earth at least he admits that though still it's better than antonio's hey and we have a sun and a moon uh, doing circuits above the earth that is all this uh, animation is supposed to do. It's not done with any huge degree of accuracy. It is simply uh, to show another way of interpreting uh, the way we see the sun and the moon behave over a period of about a month. So by your own admission, it's not very accurate. And it's pretty crude, and it's just a guess. Gotcha. Uh, so at the moment, what we, we have here is, is the moon up here uh, at the top, and we have the sun down here. And when I start the animation, um, both the sun and the moon are going to uh, come here to this green arrow, and they're going to follow these circles, which loosely follow uh, the equator on the map below. Okay, so not really any different to any other flat earth model we've been shown before. Right, please carry on. So again, it's, it's just to, to illustrate how the moon uh, moves at a steady pace and the sun at a slightly faster pace. Uh, again, this isn't taking in seasons into account or anything like this. This is simply to illustrate uh, how it can be perceived as the sun and the moon uh, orbiting above a stationary level earth. Okay, so it doesn't show us anything other than how the moon and the sun might work. Okay. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just start this and so what we had here is essentially a new moon and we now have one day has gone by. Uh, what you can observe uh, on a daily basis is, of course, the sun going overhead. And most of the time, whether it's in the daytime or the nighttime, we will see the moon go ahead, overhead as well, unless it is a new moon, which was at the start of this animation. So what we have here is the moon doing a steady pace and the sun as it's going slightly faster, getting further and further away. So several questions come to mind here. What powers the sun and moon's motion through the sky? What keeps them up there? What is the process that produces the sun's heat? Are they 3D objects? I wonder if Phuket Word will answer those for me. From the moon, as they both continue to do uh, regular circuits above uh, the Earth on a daily basis. Uh, so at this point we would still have some kind of daytime moon, but as uh, 
the sun uh, gets further and further away from the moon, we would now have uh, the moon coming up at night. And this is an observation that anyone can make anywhere on the Earth. You will see throughout a month that uh, the moon rises later and later each day until it is rising in the night. Of course, the moon rises because of Earth's rotation, but Phuket word obviously ignores that fact. And so we can see here now that uh, we're about uh, possibly halfway through the month and the sun and the moon are opposite each other. So it's at this stage that we would have a full moon at night. And uh, of course we have the sun over here and the moon over there. Right, so how are the lovely people in the south of South America supposed to see this full moon then? You see the problem here? So from that point onwards, after halfway through the month, the sun now begins to catch up with the moon. And again, you could be anywhere on the earth observing this going on. Uh, there is no start or stop point until perhaps they, they overlap and we get a new moon. So, uh, you know, as, as the days go by, we can now see uh, the sun is closing, closing the gap between the moon. So we would have these different phases. It would be going from uh, a full moon now to a waning moon as the sun gets closer. What this model shows, and it's quite clear, that everyone on Earth will experience a different phase of the moon depending on their location. This clearly does not happen in reality. Therefore, your model is incorrect. No one in the Flat Earth community can make a Flat Earth model that simultaneously gets sunrises, sunsets, seasons, eclipses, moon phases, planet positions and star positions 100% correct 100% of the time. There is, however, one model that achieves all of this without fail, the heliocentric one. Let's leave Phuket Word here with his pitiful model and give him some time to see if he can come up with another one. He won't, of course. Right, that brings this episode of Flat Earth Friday to a satisfying close. Thank you very much for joining me. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please, please do subscribe and like the video. It'll be thoroughly appreciated. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend. And I'll see you all on Tuesday for Dinosaurs with Debay. See you then.